This week, we're back in Costa Mesa, where the One Star Recruits podcast started a couple years back. Caddy Corner to South Coast Plaza. Grab yourself a teriyaki steak at Houston's and Irvine. Have a little breakfast at Susie's Cafe on Harbor. Head down to Disneyland if you want. You might run into Rip. He'll be wearing a One Star Recruits t-shirt for sure, 100%. We kick it with a fantasy football sleeper of many. Los Angeles Chargers wide out. Flower City's own on Instagram, Joshua Palmer. Let's go. This is Josh Palmer on One Star Recruits. Yo, yo, aloha. Welcome to the One Star Recruits podcast. I'm DK, joined as always with my best friend in 25 years, Rip. We're a couple one stars who, like you, we're on the journey of life. We're learning, loving, and getting better every day with the help of some five-star athletes, entertainers, coaches, celebrities from around the world. As timely, as some would call it. Uh, a well-produced a well-produced show, a well-funded podcast, some may say. We wanted to get Rip as close to Brampton, Ontario for this epi as we could. So we got him eight hours and four minutes away up that I-80 West, Rip. We got you close, bro. What time will you be arriving at Gage Park in Brampton, Ontario, Rip? Bro, I... I- I can sniff Brampton from where I'm at. I'm in the 212. I'm in the Mecca. I'm in Times Square. I'm in the Big Apple, New York City, DK. Close to Brampton, but not not too far. You would be right in Times Square, too, man. I miss I miss New York City and the East Coast like a most mofo. I have some questions for you. We'll do it on the back half of the show about New York City. I, it's been a while. I have a lot, actually a lot of questions. The the Los Angeles Chargers rip. They're one on one. A couple a couple quick hitters on the bolts just came to, to, to me real after after two weeks you can tell me thumbs up or thumbs down the defense is real the defense is legit it's real they got playmakers everywhere they got bosa they got derwin they got a few other guys and, and that the problem right now is the inconsistency in the running game and our man austin eckler yeah. yeah we'll talk about that but the defense is legit and i want to i had to double check that because i was like really i think there was lots of points it was lots of offensive scores in that Kansas City game. I think three of the, t- of the touchdowns were offensive, or 20 of the points at least. And then Vegas is pretty good offensively, you know. And, and Khalil Mack, I know we've been trying to get him on the pod for a minute too. He doesn't do a lot of podcasts. He'd be a great one for the One Stars rip. Huge pickup. Turns out to be huge. We're still waiting for our guy, Alohi Gilman, to have a couple pick sixes, have an have a impact, you know, agree. So we both agree. Defense is cool. Um, next, running back situation. Actually, we'll put that on hold. It seems like the upcoming schedule is a cakewalk. So this leads me to Mr. Palmer and to, I think, your guy, Mr. Eckler. Um, we got, let me see. Jacksonville. Me, yeah, we got the good old AFC South next at home. So Jacksonville and Houston and the Texans. Terrific. Should be dubs. We should see big numbers from your guy, Eckler, Rip, for sure, those two weeks. Then, uh, let's see. The Bolts have a uh, road game. So road game to Cleveland. That's a dub. Then they're hosting Denver on Monday night. That'll be a fun game. Tough challenge. Let's see. But, you know, look, after that, they have the Seahawks and the Falcons. Dubs. Great stretch for a guy like Joshua Palmer to shine. Actually, bro, as I'm going through the schedule now here. So I expect the Chargers to be cool is, is my take. So we're looking at you're telling me we're looking at about seven and two. All is going to be good. I mean, you're not you're not uh, factoring in the Four Justin. Herb- you're not factoring in the ju- our guy Justin Herbert's rib injury right now. He could possibly mix miss next week against the Jags. Man, our guy Herbe, Justin Herbe, shit, you know, NFL is crazy, man. They, they say for, if me and you got that injury, we would be you would be taking at least four months off of your job. You would not be in New York City making big moves, Rip. OK, this I'd, be in the, I'd be in the Columbia University Medical Center for four months. Bro, you still be at UCLA Medical Center. You'd be trying to get a Jersey Mike's at the UCLA cafeteria downstairs. Look, I think he, even if he's not back, uh. Actually, this is bad for me because I'm not sure who the backup is. I was going to say Taylor. I know he's oh, our guy, Chase, Chase Daniel, who's made forty five million dollars in his career for two hundred and thirty six pass attempts. DK best Pro life backup. out there. Pro backup. Por- por- perfect dude to, to throw it to our guy, Jay Palmer, and give it to your guy, Austin Eckler, also a former one star. Anyway, anyway, long winded way of saying I think they're going to be cool. A couple things jump out to me there. You know, let's just hit it, Rip. Los Angeles Chargers fans, Tennessee volunteer fans, proud Canadians. We were able to grab Chargers wide receiver Joshua Palmer right before the season started. Enjoy this interview with Chargers wide receiver Joshua Palmer.
Now joining the One Star Recruits podcast, we have a native of Brampton, Ontario, a second year wide receiver with the Los Angeles Chargers, probably the biggest Star Wars fan in the NFL, Canada's finest, Joshua Palmer. Thanks for hanging out with the One Stars, Josh. Oh, no, thank you for having me. Hey, I mentioned Star Wars because I see you on Twitter posting all the time about Darth Vader and Obi Wan Kenobi. You're a huge fan, right? Uh, we, you know, we had Slam Dunk ch- Champ uh, D Brown on the pod last month, and he named his son Anakin. If you have a child sure. someday and, and choose to name them after a Star Wars character, what would you name the kid? Anakin is a pretty cool name, but I don't know if I name my child Anakin. Uh, honestly, I probably wouldn't give him a, a, a Star Wars name, but I do have a. A sphinx, a little kid, a little kid. She's about to be one. Her name is Leia. Oh, okay. There you go. Yeah, so. That's sick. Nice. Fun fact. Wow. Cool, man. A sphinx same Leia. Amazing. Yeah. I love, bro, that you're uh, you're sticking with the number five. You are at Tennessee. What's this? What's the story behind that particular number? Uh, just five members of my family, and my sisters and I are all five years apart. I love that, man. Nice, nice. You know, the Chargers wide receiver room seems like a really fun bunch. Everybody knows about the vets, Keenan and Mike. And you got some young guys like yourself, Jalen, DeAndre. How's the vibe in there, man? How's hanging out after practice, kind of the overall camaraderie? It's the energy, you feeling the energy? Yeah, I never dislike coming to work because I always know there's going to be some type of joke and laughter. We're all cool with each other. So that's all you can really, that's all you can really ask for is just to be surrounded by a bunch of guys that, that want the same thing as you and you know, are all striving to be great. Facts, man. You seem like a pretty laid back dude. Who's who's the funniest teammate at your position? At any position, shit. At any position? Fahuka's pretty funny. Fahuka's pretty funny. Yeah, Keenan's yeah. Keenan's funny too. Both good guys. Yeah, Fahuka had an amazing, amazing press tour today, man. Big congrats to him. Yeah. You know, I'm a Virgo, bro. You're a Virgo. Shout out. Happy birthday coming up. Um, I'm gonna be running a half marathon for my birthday. Maybe a little sunset sale with my wife. Mm-hmm. You got some birthday plans coming up? No, nah, as of right now, no, I do not have any birthday plans coming You're up. You're focused. Focus yeah. on football. There's some yeah. good restaurants in Costa Mesa. You been to Javier's yet? No, I haven't. Put that on your list if you if you feel like if you like Mexican food, bro. All right, I'll make sure. Let's talk about Canada for a second, and, and specifically Canadians in the NFL. I, I think there are about 25 on, on Canadians on rosters right now. And just to throw out for our listeners some quick names, we got Chuba Hubbard, who backs up uh, Christian McCaffrey on the Panthers. Brent Urban, a defensive end for the Ravens. He's also from Ontario, I think Mississauga. Uh, mm-hmm. Chase Claypool of the Steelers from British Columbia. And, of course, your longtime friend, John Mechie III, who was drafted by the Texans. It reminds me a little of European hoops over the last 20 years, or even Canadian hoops, where we see like, so much talent coming into the U.S. professional leagues. And mm-hmm. for our listeners who might not know, speak on that on that Canadian football pipeline for a minute. It's only going to get better. Yeah, I, I mean, like I said before, not on this podcast, but on, on different channels, that we have a lot of talent in Canada. It's just it's a lot harder to be seen in Canada. That's why we're always usually trying to make our way to America. But yeah, there's, there's a lot of guys down there that have a lot of talent that, you know, we need to, I don't know how, but people, more scouts or whatever it is to go into Canada and to really look at the talent there. That's out of my, that's out of my, out of my field right now. Yeah. Yeah. That's the next pay grade up, but you know, the numbers speak for themselves, man. I think more scouts are going to be headed out there. You have Cleveland. It looks like on October 9th, there's a four hour drive from your hometown. You got that game circled? No, (laughs) (laughs) I don't circle any games. Oh yeah. You're just ready to ball, man, but you got to get some family down there. That would be the closest trip. Probably the cheapest ticket too. I don't know if a lot of people want to go to Cleveland. Where is that that cold out, man? Yeah, they'll probably, they'll probably drive, though. It's not bad of a drive. Quick quick hoops question. In 2019, the Raptors won the NBA title, and Canada went nuts. Where were you when that went down? Is that Was that was that a moment for you that, that clearly sticks in your sports memory? I was in Tennessee. That's right. That's yeah, right. I wasn't home, so I watched it on TV. But uh, I heard the streets were crazy, though. It was really packed. I wish I was there. But it's part, I guess part of the grind. We end every interview with the segment we call One Star to Five Star. We're one stars. We're trying to get better with advice and tips from every guest we have on this podcast. So we just want to ask you a few questions that run the gamut on a one to five star scale. Let's say one being the lowest, five being the highest. Mm -hmm. You've had a lot of buzz around you this preseason in the fantasy football world. Matthew Berry, who's who's the most well-known fantasy football analyst out there, he put out a clip last week on Twitter kind of hyping you up a little bit. Uh, Your teammate, Austin Eckler, who we, we had on this pod last year, he loves fantasy football. 
let's go on a one on a scale of one to five stars. How much do you care about fantasy football and, and really getting a lot of love this season? One star. <laughs> you're, you're, you're on the opposite end of Austin and the fans yeah. love it, though. Yeah. One star for me. It's just I mean, maybe it's a great thing. I don't know. I don't really pay much attention to it. Um, I like for me personally, I like to focus on reality, the real stuff. So I try not to actually not try. I really just kind of distance myself from the fantasy football thing just because, I mean, fantasy is in front of it, right? So I try to focus on the most important thing, which is, you know, pretty much the team and um, the realism behind every game and every player and what we see and what we know. But for the fans, yeah, it's, it's, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's a pretty fun thing because all I see is fantasy, fantasy, fantasy every, on social media, so... Yeah, no, that, that, that's the answer for someone who's focused, and, and we can't blame you, man, but it, it is something that, that the listeners love, so we had to get it in. Let's move on. So there are a lot of five-star things about Canada that might not necessarily be as great in the States here. I got I made a little list here. Maple syrup, uh, t- Tim Hortons, the healthcare system. What to you is maybe like the one-star thing about living in the U.S. that really that you miss about Canada because it, it's five stars up there? They don't have poutine here. Yeah. Is it you get good poutine in, in Toronto too, or is it it was mostly Montreal? Nah, in Toronto. There's a there's a there's a place called Pizza Depot right by my old high school called St. Rock in Brampton that has the best poutine in the country for sure. And it's called Pizza Depot? It's called Pizza Depot. It's a pizza spot, but they sell poutine. No way. Oh yeah, it's the best poutine place. And uh, not poutine place, but they have the best poutine ever. Versatile, man. I love it. Pizza and poutine. We're going to have to put that in the show notes there. Pizza Depot. All right. Yeah. We're loving hard knocks like all NFL fans getting pumped for the season. We've been watching the, the Detroit Lions on there. I'm always curious if other pros tune in on uh, on Tuesday nights. One to five stars, hard knocks on HBO. I'll tell you that the Rams and Chargers one was five stars. I watched that one a long time, uh, whenever it came out. I haven't watched the Detroit one. Okay. Does it matter if, if Detroit's on your schedule? Would you watch it more? Or that doesn't, that's irrelevant. That's irrelevant. I just, I mean, we're in camp. So, I mean, watching. But, uh, <laughs> You're getting me, enough football right now. Yeah, me, yeah. I just, yeah. And I don't have HBO, so. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, I know you watch, uh, I know you're big on Peaky Blinders. That's five star for you, right? What else are you watching right now? Are you a Game of Thrones guy? Or? I watched Game of Thrones a long time ago. I haven't finished it. Or maybe I watched the last, I don't know. I watched it so long ago. Peaky Blinders is definitely a five star. Um, right now I'm watching a show called Mindhunter on Netflix. Mindhunter, okay. Yeah, pretty cool. Um, there's a show called uh, The Sandman on Netflix. Mm-hmm. Nice, nice. Pretty Big fun. Netflix guy, I love it. Josh Palmer, man, who would have thought? Eclectic dude in his free time. Yeah, I love it. And, and your focus, man. We love watching you. Everyone go follow Josh at Flower City Zone on Twitter. It's joshuapalmer.v on Instagram. And he might not like fantasy football, but you got to go draft this man. Go Chargers. Thanks for coming on the One Star Recruits, Josh. Thank you guys for having me. Well, 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 well. Rip in NYC. The making things happen. Rip, any breaking news you want to break NYC for the podcast? I'm giving you an opportunity. I mean, breaking news, NYC's back, man. You go, go down any street in the city here, it's fucking 200 people crossing against red lights, fucking cabs hitting people, honking horns. NYC's back, DK. I don't, pandemic is over, according to Joe Biden. NYC's back, according to Rip. That's all I got to say. It's back. You, I was trying to squeeze you on a meeting, a one-star meeting with Spotify for our, our next uh, season release. You're not going to share the beans there, Rip. I, I thought about I thought about splurging in the one star budget to put up a, a one star logo in Times Square, but it was just uh, too much for for what we're bringing in right now. DK, you've already hit the major ish cliche of the cliches for the NYC visit in the game. Times Square, you've now mentioned it two times. I think it is the uh, Fisherman's Wharf, if you will, of of San Francisco, uh, L.A. It's a bit of the Runyon Canyon. You know what I mean? A little Runyon Canyon ish, and you're right back in it, loving it. Let's see. Let's see how many NYC cliches Rip could knock off in 72 hours in the big app. Let's see. Um, Pizza. Have you copped? Absolutely. That was that was the first thing I purchased when I entered uh, the state of New York. One for one. Pizza copped. It was you loved you loved it. Delicious. Oh, yes. You posted a picture. It looked amazing. Five stars. Check out her Instagram. I still I actually have DK. I had the pizza. I'm in a hotel room right now in Times Square. 
I had the pizza. I could not eat the whole thing. I ate five of eight slices, plus a couple garlic knots, which give me some credit for that. I left the rest of the pizza in the box in my room. The entire room smelled like New York City pizza. It was basically coming through the air conditioning vents. 24 hours later, which is when we're doing this pod tonight, I just grabbed a piece of that cold pizza and ate it in like 45 seconds. It's still four star. Cold New York pizza 24 hours later is still four star. Breaking news. That's, that's NYC shit. move. Yeah, that's not an LA move. LA's airs would not would not go. It'd be in the trash can in LA. Yeah, that's 24 hours plus there, son. That is real deal. Holyfield. Well, way to continue on with it. I do you know, I did notice a little bit of a of a move I did not like with the whole pizza thing. I for the first pie in New York City. It might just be me. I don't know. Listeners, you can let me know. I noticed you selected the Supreme for your first pie. I don't know and if I, I agree just- on, on that order for a single first pie. I think for me, it's clearly a, a cheese or a pepperoni, usually a half and half, just to get your palate going. So I thought about the four cheese, little backstory that I, I ordered the specialty of the pizza place that I ordered from. So that's what I did. And it's it's not called a Supreme. It was called something else. With It had sausage and pepperoni. That's a Supreme, a bro. Oh, AKA King Arthur's special. AKA. Yeah, something. No, it was the specialty of the restaurant. So I, can, I, I said, give me a recommendation for a pizza place right around here. The, the guy at the front desk gave it to me and he said, order the order, the most uh, ordered pizza on the menu. So that's what I did. Yeah, sell. Richie, rip gets sold, but yeah, you hit it. It look, did look amazing. It's just a heavier eat. You can. And the reason I said cheese or pep, you keep lighter in case you wanted to maybe try something else. It's not so filling. Also, you can. But you did it anyway. Fuck it. I said you could keep it longer, but you did it with the full Supreme, the full King Arthur special, you know, so. Fuck King, you cliche. Okay, I'm gonna keep it going. Let me see what comes to mind. Um, bagel. Have you hit ba- had a bagel? I had. I was running on Dunkin' DK this morning. I had I had a extra large iced coffee at Dunkin' Donuts, and I got the bagel sandwich with bacon and egg for breakfast. I was bagel I'm at full. Dunkin is not the New York City bagel. Rep. <laughs> no, uh, they, they yeah, it's it's the frozen Dunkin' bagel, but it is a bagel, DK. But that's it. That's what. That's all you had in your body all day: iced coffee and and a, and a Dunkin' bagel sando. No, I had a BLT for lunch. I had a, a dinner at a nice Italian restaurant. I'm using the per diem from my, from my company. That's a very generous. Oh, and very nice. I'm, I'm eating like I'm eating like a pig. What do you get at Italian restaurant? You get the uh, you get the uh, the veal cutlet. No, I got the uh, shrimp 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 fusilli diablo with the uh, yeah, extra ah. spicy. Well, and, uh, yeah, and an IPA. It was, it was Give amazing. a restaurant shout out. Rouse? Is that Rouse? Uh, it was called Nizza, N I Z Z A, like pizza with an N. Nizza in, uh, in, in, in like 44th Street and 9th Avenue over here. That's the life, man. You're doing it, Rev. Look at you. So you feeling all get happy to be away, bro? When you're watching some Netflix, looking at Pornhub, doing all the stuff, and you have some time or, or nah? Just trying Dude, to. Uh, Honestly, like for a dad of two young kids, it's like I get 48 hours away. I'll tell you exactly what I did. I ordered this pizza. I timed it to get back to my room at 830, right when the Eagles uh, game started, the the Eagles and Vikings on Monday Night Football. I watched the entire Eagles game, watched my my QB1 Jalen Hurts in fantasy, take it home for me, got the victory. Sat in my room for three hours, ate five slices of pizza, and watched that game. It was amazing. DK. Five slices. It was alone work. time. That's my alone time as a 43-year-old man with two kids. That's it right there. Damn. That is good, bro. How about that Darius Slay, huh? He shut down Justin. We thought Justin Jefferson was the best until Darius Slay shows up. Who knows? I think Darius Slay had literally six balls thrown at him and had three pass breakups and two picks. I think that's how dominant that dude fucking was. Amazing. Eagles are for real, huh? Eagles, who who thought for real squad, eh? Dude, I, I predicted the the uh, Cowboys to get to the Super Bowl, and, and you saw what happened with Dak Prescott. But yeah. it looks like the Eagles might. Uh, the Giants are two and zero too. So the NF, apparently the NFC East is a really good division. All of a sudden, all these off seasons, we all think we know. You're doing all this studying for off seasons on your pick'em team. Yeah, me too, bro. Look at this. Who knew with the Cowboys? Unbelievable. I mean. We haven't even talked about our Cardinals. God, I can't. Now that you mentioned the Eagles, Vikings, I can't get out of my head how fucking shitty Kirk Cousins is. Jeez. You remember uh, You remember Cousins Subs? You ever go there? Oh, yeah. Cousins Subs, Tempe, Arizona. Good spot. Whatever, whatever happened. Great man. spot. I know, dude. They had such soft, good bread. Soft bread. Nice soft great bread. Great bread. Really great crispy thin lettuce. Um, Yeah, great. Sandwiches stay together really nicely, speaking of. 
probably the number two sub spot in Tempe behind Blimpy, in my opinion. Damn cousins, huh? You know, I think I looked this up before uh, when I was on the Shooting Two podcast. We had did a little sandwich thing, and they were on my list of top five. I think they still exist in the in the Midwest. So when we do a Midwest tour, I didn't know you were a fan of uh, Cousins the subs, not Kurt Cousins the damn quarterback. Jeez Louise! I mean, speaking of quarterbacks, Jeez Louise quarterbacks. That was a ride with our Cardinals. I'm not even copied into this podcast hooting and hollering. It was very fun. I won. I won a pizza from our guy trained at the at the TTB podcast. Check them out. Great pod. Uh, but it was like watching a damn car accident rip. I mean, it does. Does it feel good? Are you repping the birds out there in, in New York City? You got your socks on. I mean, you know, from the get go, I'm, I'm in on six and 11 for the Cardinals and I'm standing by it right now, man. One win is great. And it was exciting as hell. Like you said, it was a car wreck. If, if you have 25 seconds and you haven't seen that Kyler Murray two point conversion, it's unbelievable, man. That, that, that guy does stuff that nobody else does for sure. But I don't know, man. It just seems so disjointed that offense, that defense. I'm still, I'm still rolling with the six and eleven. But I, I was excited about that win. That's for sure. Jays, the guy I golf with out here, Harrison, kept bringing up the uh, the the infant running around with mom's cell phone. Uh, <laughs> he said it like six times, and then just it's so accurate. Uh, hopefully, I guess I mean, D, just stay, wait till D Hop. I mean, we hope. But you know, it seems like we paid a dude rip who might not be able to see receivers. I don't know how to say that. In a better way. <laughs> he can't see over the line or what? I mean, if we can stay afloat till till Hopkins gets back after in game week seven, right? Like if we can go, I mean, three and three would be amazing, but I'm not, I think it's going to be more like two and four or one and five. But if we can stay afloat till D hop gets back, then, then we got a little chance of beating that six and 11 that I predicted. Yeah. You know, a little tougher schedule than them bolts they got going, but you know, good, good, good. I mean, a win's a win. It was, I, I left, I went on a hike. I left the house and I, I said, shit, I got to owe this dude a pizza. And uh, I got back in the fourth quarter and I was just screaming like a little girl still. So still a fan, still loving this shit. How about Miami uh, for real or fake rip Tua? Oh, I think they're the real deal with, with Tyreek and Waddle. I mean, you can't guard both those guys at the same time. One of them's going to be open and sleeping giant Raheem Moster was one of my fantasy sleeper picks of this year, man. That man's coming up. He's uh, he was great with the Niners until he got hurt. If that dude can stay healthy, they have a scary ass offense. DK. Yeah, you always like Mozart. Right? He's came and come on this podcast. We almost got got him a couple of times, came and missed like a galaxy move planets moving through the galaxy. He's uh, yeah. Fun team. I don't know for sure. I think I really want to think that that's going to be the team. I think he'll made a great decision in getting down to Miami. And if, yeah, speed, speed kills, bro. Shit. It was a lot of fun. I also enjoyed Lamar. I don't have a full explanation to, to that kind of breakdown happening in that defense. I guess it's better to, to, to happen early in the season than later in the season. And hopefully you can learn from that. I'm trying to think that way for my fantasy football squads out here. Uh, one league I'm two and oh, and the other one I'm Owen two. who, you know, you just we, we never know shit as a story of the NFL every year. I, we, I, we do this segment rip where the week one, week two, and we say the same thing. We're dumb. We don't know anything. That's why the NFL is so great, man. It's it's unlike any other sport. Super unpredictable. I mean, parody like crazy. Who thought the Giants would be two and oh right now? You know, so that's what that's why the NFL is so great, man. Yeah, I'm jealous you're in NYC. You're probably jealous. I'm out here in Hawaii, dude. It's, it's that. What is it? Six hour. We've got a full nine hour time difference pop in. I got a haircut, man. It's hard to it's hard to admit it, but my new haircut request used to be like a Tom Brady. I used to throw out a couple Corey Kisper. Lines. I used to did a Corey Kisper once. Let's just remember that one. <laughs> the new haircut look and request is unfortunately now it's the Rosie O'Donnell pixie cut. <laughs> fucking a it's like it's the right haircut for me right now it's like i can't stand having heavy ass hair longer hair in the back you know it needs to be lighter now so are you are you like, shave, are you shaving it on the sides and long on no sides? it's kind of like rosie o'donnell like her gray hair like mad at trump years right now <laughs> adam Lan- the comedian adam land knows this haircut but it works for me it wor- i've been getting compliments my wife likes it uh, you know f- I it had to happen. It had to happen. So, um, yeah. Any questions on that, Rip? I know shit. You haven't got a haircut since the '93 All Star Game was in Phoenix. 
How much, how much does a haircut cost in Hawaii these days? What kind oh, of salon no. are you going to? Well, no, the reason this happened, too, that's the thing. I don't get haircuts. So I start becoming like a like a buffalo, how the way this thing grows, not out kind of down, but out wide. And uh, Kimmy's hairstylist was, was in between chairs. I don't know what you call it. He had, in, t- he had an extra 10 minutes. She, she, she's great. She's from uh, San Jose. Shout out to Katie. If you're ever in Maui and need a blowout, she'll, she's the best here on the west side of Maui. Anyway, she came to do Kimmy's hair and she's here. I was like, shit, like ultimate lazy move, but take advantage of resourceful move, if you will. I was like, oh, I'm going to get a haircut, you know, I was like, hey, you mind doing just quick trim next? So I hopped in there and after some mulling around some Tom Brady pictures, we decided on this Rosie O'Donnell pixie, but I'm feeling good, man. I'm feeling confident. You didn't answer the question. How much does it cost? Oh, 40 bucks. Okay, 40. That sounds about right. Yeah. Inflation. Haircuts used to cost eight bucks. Then I remember 12, then 15 eight bucks. <laughs> growing up, they're eight bucks, right? Oh, yeah. Usually, yeah. Growing up like 30 years ago, they were eight bucks. Yeah, yeah. You go to the barber, like eight bucks, you tip them with a 10, you know, you're out, whatever. That was back in the day. Then we started doing super cuts, which was 15, sports cuts, 1999. And then. Really, the ultimate goal of the haircut for me now is I'm less concerned about the haircut and the styling as I don't I, I don't want them to talk to me. <laughs> That's it. That's the most important thing. It's but your like wife, a, your wife was there, too. So it was like a three way conversation or there was well, just kind of quiet. she dipped on me and I had to do kind of some small talk in there. But it's so much more important to me. Like in the Uber, you have the option for the mute. Like, don't talk now. It's an option. That would be a great offering for hairstylists. Not to say, Katie, you're great if you're listening to this podcast. <laughs> great conversation. But it's an important aspect for me just to be able to sit quietly and contemplate the thinning of my hair. And uh, I don't know where I was going this, bro. Maybe it ties to my wreck of the week. <laughs> that's you know your loan time. That's your, that's your haircut so. question. How much it costs? Yeah, of course. Always how no. much it costs. Yeah. How much your kids' haircuts cost? Uh, 20 bucks, actually 20 bucks each. So 40 for two. And, uh, they get a little lollipop at the end. You get a lollipop at the end of yours? No, no. Smoke the ball. <laughs> Smoke the ball together. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, what else, man? What else? Anything else, Rip? Would you Rex of the week? I'll get there. Did you watch the Manning cast or did you watch ESPN when you watch Monday Night Football? I just watched ESPN. I, I have never watched a Manning cast. I don't know where to find it at all. I've never watched it. Well, c- congratulations. It's your day of enlightenment. ESPN 2. Okay. ESPN 2. I'll have to check it's that worth out. Checking out. You're a podcaster, Rip. You should check it out. I think it's um, I think it's going to be the future of, of broadcasting and everybody's niche, how they want to watch and broadcast. And probably the next level of the game is like guys like us doing it with our listeners and watching a game together it's coming so you get a little taste of that it's pretty good though did you see eli manning's chad powers viral moment yeah that was good his penn state uh walk on tryout for the penn state football team with chad yeah, powers uh, that, that was uh, what the fuck's up with the manning brothers huh they're gonna we thought the mannings peaked 10 years ago they nope they they may be media barons you'll be on okay. saturday night live pretty soon i think like as, as like regulars i mean i'm impressed i would have never thought even looking at the child that's why you never judge a childhood a family portrait but do you right think now, anyone you're, do you you're think at the any- age too when you're looking at your family portrait right now if you you never you never know what you're working with rip all right this guy has who would have thought anyway kudos big kudos to the man do you think in- anyone on the penn state coaching staff or organization knew who he was and was in on that that was my thought because he does have a bit of a distinct look i mean he's like six five he's yeah yeah I mean, he's got a, a, like a bridge like a note bridge on his nose like he's got a unique nose Since somebody had to know too, it's very mainstream it's not like it's a it's a younger coach i thought about that rip i don't want to be the dream killer my sister dream killed all of hdtv for me uh and all of house hunters international for me telling me that it's all fake and they Ooh. tell the contestants of House Hunters International or the couples, people looking at houses, to, what to say and one to get angry and one to say they. So uh, everybody I'm, knows. Everybody knows that. Come on. Oh, everybody knows that. that? <laughs> Reality well, TV is all scripted, bro. Well, that's bullshit. Nobody's telling me anything around here. Then I had to find a couple of local gems here in Maui recently. It took me a year and a half to find two of the best things here. Nobody's telling me anything anywhere. You want to know what they are? 
Yeah, Rex of the he Week. Be, or... He should be things. These are not even Rex of the Week. These should be things that if somebody moves to Lahaina, they should be told within two weeks of moving here. Okay? I will be that person. Hit me on Twitter. Hit us on the pod. I'll answer your questions. But I'm going to give you two hitters. I wish I might. You're going to fucking have to figure this out. Sushi spot. No sushi. Finally, somebody tells me, hey, there's a sushi spot, Lahaina Sushi Company. As long as you just get the basic rolls, and I don't like to get too crazy with my sushi. I just kind of like the couple basics in there. Shrimp tempura roll, avocado roll, maybe a little maki. You know what I mean? And uh, But it's a pain in the ass everywhere to pick up anything because you got to find parking and it's touristy or it's like in a, in a resort area. Nothing's ever easy. This place, private little parking lot. They leave it in a bag like a Starbucks coffee, grab and go, online ordering, ready in 15 minutes every single time. Amazing. Took me a year and a half. Finally found my sushi spot. So there's one. Who broke the news to you? My boy, Jake, I golf with. He's like, you want sushi? I was like, I'm not fucking waiting in line. He's like, what are you talking about? It takes 15 minutes. Changed my whole. So so there you go. What's one learning? Second one, uh, Paya Fish Company. Amazing little place to get fresh fish here. Pain in the ass. Same deal as as restaurant number one. Hey, just a pain in the ass. Guess what? Call in. There's a drive through window. Nobody told me about. Fucking a! Thanks again, Big Jake, showing me that one. So, rip. It's a week of learning. I got completely off of Los Angeles and the Chargers and this whole thing. Let me just edit this out. I think we only got about ten minutes with our guy, Mr. Josh Palmer. He wasn't the most talkative rip, you know. I'm gonna get him. We're gonna get him back next year. I think we almost got going with some some of that poutine stuff. You don't even. You never even had good poutine, bro. I don't even think you know. I mean, from what I can see, it's basically fries covered in cheese and gravy, which doesn't really sound that good to me, to be honest. Yeah, well, it does, but it's it's particular cheese, cheese curds, has to be, has to have a certain stretch to it, and has a certain pop, they'll, say, they'll tell you. It gravy, seem like, it doesn't gravy seem like not good. Do you not put gravy on your on your Thanksgiving plate? Yeah, but I don't eat fries for Thanksgiving. It, it doesn't seem like it should be on an NFL wide receiver's diet either. Man. I hope he's eating that shit in the offseason, too. Oh, now we're judging diet. That is clearly offseason. Dude is built like a beast, bro. You know who you should you get on the diet. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tease next week's episode. Your guy, we got our guy. We got a guy coming up. We got a pro athlete coming up next week who's never banged anybody his entire playing career. <laughs> we talk about it. And also never missed a game, so there's probably a correlation there, too. Five stars, please, just for that tease alone. And everyone can guess who that is by those two clues. If you can't, you did not watch basketball in the 80s and 90s and your head was under a rock. Did you post that picture Nick B sent us with that what looked to be a, a wrestler? No, I, I should put it on Instagram right now and, and say first person, first person to guess who the yep. first person to tell us who this is gets a one star shirt. Yeah, put it up tonight. When, if the new, East Coast hours, bro, because I have no fucking clue. All right, I'm gonna put it up tonight. You have any clue? It has to be a wrestler, I, or is it gonna be Brian Bosworth because he still has that look? Nick Beeb acted like it was obvious. I actually have no idea. It could be a it could be a UFC guy, a foot pro football player. I have no idea. Listeners will tell us. What a wild podcast! Can't believe we talked about cousin subs. My favorite part so far. Let's do Rex of the Week, dog. You got to have good ones. You just some traveling. I think I'll mix mine into a traveling one because I just used it for a little travel myself. What do you got? Fire up. Listeners, we do uh, recommendations of the week. Uh, anything that was felt good this week that we want to share with the world. Anything. This is That's the thing. People overthink the wreck of the week sometimes. Not me and Rip. Go ahead. I got a really good one, DK. They closed down a few streets around my neighborhood this weekend in Long Beach, California. And there was like booths set up and games for kids and live music and everything. And one in particular is the one I'm going to recommend. It's called the Backyard Golf Game. It's two guys from Long Beach, California invented this game. It's called the Backyard Golf Game. It's basically a putting green and three rings where you try to sink the ball into the rings on a putt. They sell it for 149 bucks. Uh, if, if you mention the Long Beach Block Party or Beach Streets, it was called, they'll sell it to you for 109 it's the backyardgolfgame.com. Their motto is your yard just became the most competitive place in the neighborhood. And it's true because my six-year-old was out there. He's never golfed in his life. He was out there for 20 minutes playing this game. It's a magnet for kids, a magnet for anyone who loves competition, and a magnet for anyone who get, wants to get better at golf. So it's called the Backyard Golf Game, the backyardgolfgame.com. Mention Beach Street. So give it to you for 109 bucks, DK. Man, putting gets chicks. 
That's great that he's getting the kids involved. You should have. We should have him on the pod. Learn more about that. That sounds like a great idea. We'll have him I on the can, pod. I can a one star uh, one up that business plan with uh, a boarding school escapade that we used to do that was very similar. It reminded me of it, um, <laughs> a different, and how I would do it today. The way we did it back then is we would throw. Uh, we'd have a, a bocce ball, kind of. It was a heavier ball. You know, it, you ever remember the the balls you used to play roller hockey with, like that rubber orange ball? Yeah. Mm-hmm. One of those. We'd take that and we would throw it as far as we could, and we'd start on campus. Beaver Dam, Wisconsin, middle of central Wisconsin. We would take uh, a, uh, a p- one club, a pitching wedge, and you were allowed to have three golf balls. When you lost all your three golf balls, you were done. The game was called Urban Golf. Three holes, first one to, to get to win. So you would throw the – uh, the ball as far as you could, that would be the first hole. So we'd start on like a football field and it would lead to like fucking the city hall. And then it would lead to like literally urban golf, bro. And sometimes we would play 18 holes if some people got after it on a Saturday. So could you imagine a bunch of knucklehead kids hitting golf balls through your fucking city playing 18 holes of urban golf. So I don't know if that's a real thing. If that's just an idea for somebody I just gave to be an actual thing and they can make that safe. What do you think, Rip? Stupid idea or great idea? It sounds kind of dangerous to me, but like you said, you were you were what a teenager at the time, so I, I mean I could see that being fun when as I'm it was my teenager. Story, yeah, yeah, it was started with chipping, and chipping got boring. So next thing you know, we're launching fucking you know our our pitching wedges ninety yards through, um, you know the Beaver Dam Brewery down First Street. Anyway, I'm on a rampage. Great wreck, Rip. We should have him on the podcast. I think it's a terrific idea. I think there should be a uh, putting. I think there's an amazing hotel here in Connapoli. It might exist. When you and Seymour are, are out here, actually, we should go explore it. The, I think there might be a old putting green putting putt putt course from the 70s up there that hasn't been touched in decades. That could be a very cool place to do like a tiki bar and adult putt putt kick it spot. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I'm down to try it out. Rooftop, like rooftop, good drinks, adult putt putt. I think that could work anyway. That sounds great. Yeah check it out um my turn um damn yours is way better than mine anyway pillowcases bro i've had problems with pillowcases for a while i just can't get right temperature i can't get i've had problems with pillows anyway i found some pillows that work i'm not sure what they are but uh pillowcases have just been solved dude you know what the key is fucking mulberry silk you heard of it no does it make it okay, soft? So it's a silk, so, you know, uh, silk's always nice and always stays a little bit cold. But apparently this mulberry silk um, helps with, like, all this, you know, helps with face wrinkles and acne and any night sweats. It doesn't um, soak in. And uh, anyway, you heard it first. I bet you for the holidays, everybody will be starting about, be talking about mulberry silk. Okay, like eucalyptus. Remember the eucalyptus run of 2021? Yeah. I bet you, bro, you heard it first. One star recruits that you're going to start hearing about mulberry uh, silk. And we're in front of it on this podcast. That's what we're doing for our listeners. Add in value. Um, I like this brand. We got this brand, uh, Blissy, and Kimmy hooked it up. It's, but it's so good. It's been the best pillowcase that I found. And they also make um, eye masks for five star travelers like you were doing cross country travel. Would you fly, Delta? Jet Blue. Oh, you cheap ass mofo. That's not Spirit, bro. It's not Frontier. It's, it's the same level. level. It's the same level. Respectable airline. They got Direct TV on there. Come on. Sweet man. lordy, man. Anyway, record of the week, man. Mulberry Silk. Google it. Find yourself something. It will help you get less wrinkles in your face. How's your face wrinkles doing? Oh, man. The older I get, the deeper they get. The less sleep I get, the deeper they get. Not getting better. I mean, I didn't throw some Mulberry Silk on there and see if it fixes it. Yeah, you're gonna start. You're gonna start looking like a good round face old man here pretty soon. This is good. Well, shit. Li- hey, thank you, listeners. If you rolled with us, you just are the realist. Uh, five stars. If you enjoyed it, I'm telling you, Rip. We connected on 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 a Maui connection with uh, some of the Showtime Lakers for next week's pod here, and it really it worked itself out. It worked itself out. And uh, I appreciate you uh, booking the guests we have next week. I appreciate you getting on the podcast at midnight in New York City after you uh, ate some veal cutlets and five slices of pizza from, from fucking 48 hours ago, man. Thank you. New York, New York, big city of dreams. We'll see you next week, listeners. Appreciate y'all. See you next week. 
Listeners, if you think Joshua Palmer is a breakout wide receiver, we had Jaguars, $72 million man, one of the leading receivers in the NFL, Christian Kirk on the podcast. Here's a clip with Jaguars wide receiver Christian Kirk. If you want to listen to the rest of the episode, check out One Star Recruits wherever you get your podcast. Uh, just, just, I mean, leadership's not something that's foreign to me. Uh, I just kind of always naturally uh, have, have seen myself just kind of slide into that role, you know, with the teams that I've been on. You know, I was a, a team captain three years when I was at Saguaro and uh, a captain, you know, as well. While I was at Texas A&M and, you know, I just, uh, I like taking care of people, you know, especially people that, you know, I'm invested in and, and, and love. And so uh, I view all my teammates like that and, and I'm always going to do whatever I can to, to bring the best out of them. And so that's, that's all, you know, as a leader, that's all I want to do is just bring the best out of people. And, you know, whether it's, you know, getting on them and, you know, giving them a little bit of, of, of hard criticism, you know, some, some people respond to that and some people respond to just, you know, you know, being loved on and, and, and you got to just be aware and know who, you know, who you're around and, you know, what your teammates, you know, character traits are and, and try to, try to, you know, work with them to bring the best out of them. So, 